The goal of this video is to examine a technique called separation of variables, which allows you to solve certain types of differential equations. So we'll look at this very simple differential equation as a motivating example. The first step, if possible, is to separate variables. And what this means is you formally treat the dy and the dx as separate entities that can be multiplied and, and the rest of the differential equation you try to manipulate algebraically so that the two sides are completely distinct in their variable dependence. So in this case we have the left side is completely in terms of y and the right side is completely in terms of x. And you'll notice we have differentials on both sides. And differentials are meant to be integrated. So once you've separated out the differentials that have to do with these two distinct variables, then you can attempt to integrate. And, and in this case, we get y plus a constant of integration on the left side, and on the right side of the equation, we get 1 half x squared plus a constant of integration. Now, this, these two constants of integration are a bit redundant because, in fact, you could subtract the one from the other and just rename that constant something else. And so the lesson here is that when you perform the integration in this process, you only need one constant of integration. Just decide which side you want to put that constant on. You don't need a constant on both sides. Now, a third step might be necessary, but in this case, it's not. It, you might have to solve the resulting equation for y to get your explicit function. In this case, it's not necessary because it's already written that way. So there's our general solution to the original equation. So what is a general equation? It's really a family of equations. So we could plot the function y equals 1 half x squared plus k for various values of k. And this picture, you should this will look familiar to you after a while, because when you plot families of solutions, i.e. general solutions to differential equations, you get something called a foliation of the plane. Essentially, um, the solutions comb out a nice uh, space in the plane. They sort of fill up the plane through their, um, with their graphs. Um, so let's look at another example. This, this looks slightly more fearsome, but um, it is uh, possible to separate variables. We can multiply both sides by 1 plus x squared. Uh, actually, we wouldn't need to do that. We can multiply both sides by dx and both sides by e to the y. And you get this equation of differentials. And you integrate both sides. And on the left side, you get e to the y. On the right side, you get arctan of x plus your constant, which we only need to put on one side. Solving for y gives you ln of arctan of x plus k. And once again, if you plot these solutions for various values of k, you get a rather pretty picture. And, and this is another example of a so-called foliation of the plane. So the final example, what we'll do is multiply both sides by 2y and both sides by dx. And we integrate. And solve for y. Now in this case we're going to multiply both sides by 2 and now we've got a new constant 2k but once again we don't want to get too fancy with our constants. 2k is itself a constant so at this point it might be wise to rename it just to keep life simple. And now we can take the square root so y equals plus or minus square root of x plus c. So in this case our general solution we actually have two families if you think about it. There's the possibility of taking the positive root and the negative root and then for each of those possibilities you can use any value of c. So in fact, when you plot these, you get one family where you've taken the positive root, and you get another family when you've taken the negative root. And in both cases, you can let c be whatever you want, and in totality, you get your foliation of the plane once again. So it's probably instructive to go back and think of the three steps as possible hurdles, because it's not necessarily the case that you can get over each of these hurdles. So let's look at some examples where we actually get tripped up. In the first case, we'll look at the equation dy dx equals x squared plus y squared. No matter how hard you try, algebraically, there's no way you can get all your y's on one side and x's on the other. And this is an example of what we would call a non-separable equation. It's an equation that simply does not yield to this method in any way. You can't even begin the process. You trip over the first hurdle. 
But even if you get over the first hurdle, you might still run into trouble. So look at this equation, dy dx equals cosine of x squared. This, is a dif this, this differential equation is separable because you can get dy on one side and cosine x squared dx on the other. But now you're set up to integrate and you realize that even though it's separable as an equation, you can't integrate cosine x squared in, um, in exact form. So it turns out you trip on the second hurdle. You can't actually integrate both sides. And in this third example, we have a separable equation. You can do the algebra to get your two differentials. You can integrate both sides successfully, but now what you get is an equation that you have to solve for y, and you can't do it. You can't actually solve for y, so you get stuck at the very end, tripping up on the third hurdle. Now, in fact, there is a formula that allows you to solve for y, but it is far more complicated than the quadratic formula. And the truth of the matter is, for fifth degree and higher polynomial equations, you may literally be stuck with no option even a crazy one. So um, there are equations where you can get all the way to the end where you've integrated and you still can't solve explicitly for y. Um, so separation of variables works in many cases, many important cases, and it's a very, uh, very critical tool to understand when you try to solve differential equations.